Welcome to the podcast World on the Move, which is a special program for the UN Summit on Refugees and beyond that. And we've got refugees and migrants from all around the world. They have fascinating stories and they're going to speak for themselves. We're going to hear directly from them about issues that really pertain to their lives, be it xenophobia, be it hate speech, be it finding a job, making a new life in a new culture. But first now, let's hear from our guests. I'm in Estonia, a country which is really like somehow small, uh, 1.5 million like uh, uh, population uh, people heard about refugees coming here so they were freaked out people I was the first Syrian that they would see they were like oh that's how they look like they only see Syrians on TV they see them on uh, boats they th- see them in groups we have like Facebook we have Twitter we have many ways that news are going around so fast I open a video and I see like some ugly thing and it's linked to- with Syria to me I need to understand what's those people fears the south african diaspora is very fragmented um very different and therefore different reasons in argentina for instance it's not the people who've gone to work for investment banks in london it's people who have moved from bankruptcy and farming in south africa to a place of fertile land with easy visa visa requirements i've been really privileged to uh, live in houston texas which has the most refugees in the united states Once you provide that platform for connectivity, once you kind of make people realize indirectly that we're really united by our differences as much as we are by our similarities, that's when, uh, you know, that's when real dialogue happens. And And as everybody knows that Syrians are everywhere now because of the problem what we have. So I'm trying my best, whatever I could, with the languages, with presenting, with whatever is, to help my Syrian. Um, whether I'm in uh, Lebanon, in uh, Iraq, or in the States here, or Canada, there is that sort of um, empowerment that we seek from one another. Um, a lot of people have had a successful journey of diaspora, while others are still stuck on borders. And uh, these people do need to, you know, to connect with people who have done the journey from statelessness to citizenship, or from statelessness to finding a home. I think when you're in Europe, at least for us, it's harder because there's a very strong stereotype about who we are and what we do. Uh, We are usually portrayed as being gypsies and thieves. Um, And well, a lot of people leave Romania because there aren't any jobs there. So they end up going to Spain, Italy or the UK. Uh, So, of course, living in Spain for a year for my master's, I did encounter that on a daily basis. Uh, What I was saying in my profile is that because I'm here, nobody really knows what Romania is all about and where I come from, which is really great because I don't have to defend myself on a daily basis and have to prove myself to people that I am good enough, that I'm not a gypsy, that I'm not a thief, that I won't steal your bag, that I will pay my bill at the end of the day. It doesn't bother me as much as it used to, but at the same time, you think that we've reached that point in society and civilization where people stop doing it and stop thinking it was okay to do it, if it makes any sense. I totally agree with Monica. As me living here in Europe, I think that the most uh, obvious obstacle that migrants are facing is the stereotypes. And the problem with stereotypes is that that is the first step to stigmatization. And stigmatization at the same time is the first step of of discrimination. And uh, the problem is that in Europe, we have seen that these steps have led to legal status, uh, these discriminations. It's it's been really uh, tough uh, past four and a half years to integrate in a community like the Kenyan community, in an African community. The Congolese living in Kenya. It, it's a community. We we have a problem because of the image we receive from from a perspective of the other uh, you know other countries. You know uh, you know they 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 take us who are not intelligent because we are a rich country, but we're being manipulated. But we we all fleeing our countries on a daily basis. So it's so traumatizing to 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 live that life. The the protection of migrant people, the protection of guaranteed in a, in a country like this, in a country where the the community just don't want migrants. Uh, and to be precise, the refugees. 
I see a huge disparity um, and a huge gap between the Fijian community in Fiji and the Fijian community in the States. I could see it even within my parents' generational gap. Uh, for me and my generation has been even more difficult. Uh, one, because there's not many Fijians in uh, California specifically. Uh, and two, just because a lot of the traditions and cultures have been left behind at home once you are moving to a country such as the U.S. I would definitely love to be in more involved in my community back home, but I think that there is a facet that is missing within, within the community in Fiji. What I came to learn, whether it was with my previous job experience or my current studies, is actually the importance of the media and how the media is formulating and twisting ideas and images in the minds of the audience. Whenever they are tying the issue of Islam or the Islamic State to terrorism and identifying and categorizing these attackers in a sense, the media is really playing a huge role in creating wider and deeper notions of xenophobia. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, something that we might not as touch it as we should is uh, the area of refugee camps. Those are the most needy part of the society. You know, uh, their story needs to be heard. And there is so many refugee camps around the world, starting from uh, Kenya, the biggest one, or second mention, to places even in Australia, in uh, uh, Century Island, to uh, the Calais migrant in between uh, England and, and France. Um, and, and even on the border of Mexico and the United States, we have so many uh, migrants. With us Eritreans, uh, there is a huge uh, thing happening right now. There is uh, young people are leaving the country in massive wave due to country condition. I am one of them because of uh, uh, human rights violations, um, which is uh, known to be to the world right now. Um, we're living in, in big numbers, but those stories need to come up so that the world could assist. Uh, in pressurizing government to do more uh, towards uh, democratizing their country. And hence, in that regard, uh, we're creating a solution of reducing uh, migration outflow. Uh, the world is getting smaller and smaller, hence people move easily. Like in the European Union, it's easy to work from one country to another country, to move from one country to another country. Why shouldn't it be from one continent to another continent? Um, it should be okay for people to migrate. It should be okay for us to be from anywhere. Mera, you make some very interesting observations and you've actually prompted me to say a few things here. Somali communities, refugees, have been living in refugee camps for generations. And the Somali diaspora abroad have actually become quite concerned about this situation. And they are becoming effective lobbyists to ensure that Somali refugees can break out of this vicious cycle of just living in refugee camps. It's important that diaspora communities get together and you as young people can make a difference in terms of lobbying. Remember, the governments have made a commitment in the Sustainable Development Goals for the next 30 years to ensure migration is safe, responsible, orderly, but those words will remain empty unless they receive uh, effective pushing from people like yourselves. And with that, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for the time that you've devoted to this very interesting discussion and hope to see you again online very soon.